No alrighty. Hey traders, John Hal here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the markets. We're going to be looking at uh, what's been going on right now and a bit of a technical analysis update across the markets. Plus also, I wrote an article for my private clients in my list uh, on the weekend and I want to share that article with you and hopefully that's going to help you out. So let's get straight into it. Don't place a trade based on what you'll see in this video because there is no guarantees of making a profit in the market. It takes you a long time to become a good trader. So this video here is just to educate you to become a much better trader. Alrighty traders, let's get straight into the video today. Let's actually start with the S&P 500 and we'll see what's going on here. So the really interesting thing about the S&P 500 is that we are still in a terrorizing move to the upside, just a terrorizing move. And a lot of people, a lot of people are still putting these headlines out there about how overvalued this market is and how this is the biggest bubble and the market's gonna crash and and be, the, the, the taper tantrum and all this sort of stuff, right? It's all this stuff out there that they believe is going to cause them to not do well out of the market. And so when, or, or the market to not do well, should I say, and that's a really interesting thing, isn't it? The really interesting thing is that when we're looking at these markets, we're looking at the market as uh, as, as it is, but we think all these all this negative news that's been coming out the whole year is you know is all this sort of stuff, right? With China and the debt and the debt ceiling and the taper and all that sort of stuff. But guess what? The market what? The market keeps going up. Why is that? Why does the market keep going up based on all this sort of stuff? I'll explain to you the reason why. When we look at the markets as a whole, right? Now, when, when, when I say keep going up, I, I talk about, I talk about, um, you know, they, it, it goes through, it goes through whipsaws, right? It goes through pullbacks. It goes through an upward trend, stair steps up. We never just go straight up, but we stair step up. So why is the market still going up when you've got so much negative news out there negative Nancy's out there doing their thing. Why is it that the market is still making, still is very, 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 very strong in the market? And I'll explain the reasons why. It's because that the underlying main thing that causes asset prices to rise is what? Interest rates. Interest rates are still very, very, very low. So yes, we've got all this negative stuff out there that's gonna cause the market to crash. But what is the main thing we should be watching for? The main thing. Now, yes, we're going to get pullbacks. A pullback is not a change in trend, right? So if I look at the markets here, over the last 12 months, two years, we've had plenty of pullbacks, but that's not a change in market. That's just a pullback, then a continuation. A pullback, a continuation, pullback, continuation. Even through here, guess what that was? A pullback and then a continuation. I've been long, for me, I've been long the S&P and the, the S 500 for a long time and, uh, and on this breakout, see how we had this pullback through here? And then we had the breakout. This is actually when I personally went long the markets. Oh, I actually added to my long position, why? Because it was after a pullback and we're now likely to see another move to the upside. And now we've just gone through a bit of a sideways phase right now and we're likely to see, we're likely to see a breakout of, a, of this and we're now likely to see a continuation and a nice move leading into, uh, leading into, man, I just lost the plot. <laughs> December, right? Leading into December and I think, this, and I believe December is gonna be an incredible month for us for the entire market because the underlying surface of what's happening, okay? So they still are, ta they are tapering, but not a lot. So there's still a lot of QE and interest rates are still very, very, very low. The mechanisms, right? The mechanics behind asset prices, if we just look at those things, yes, they're bringing down, they're tapering, but they're not tapering a lot. And yes, there may be a lot of stuff happening out there, but there's a lot of money on the sidelines coming into these markets, a lot of buybacks, low interest rates, and so on and so forth. So that's the reason why if you've been following me now for quite some time, you will know that I've been saying that please don't fight the market, not yet anyway. If the market's gonna change tune, the market's gonna change trend, we will, the, the chart will start to give us some sort of top action, okay? Remember, if you're thinking, if your mind is thinking, when you think crash, you think straight down, right? You just think, woof, straight off the cliff, right? You think massive crash. Remember that a crash, right? A crash, a marketing term, 
really is. That's all it really is, right? It's just a marketing term. It really is a crash. Because what is a crash? A crash, when we think crash, we think one day, boom, I'm going to miss the crash, right? But even in the Rona days, right? Even when even what happened last year, guess what? It still took over two months, right? It still took over two months. Or it, was it two months? Let me just double check here. Oh, no, no, over a month, right? It still took, it still took a month, one month, over 30 days for that movement down, right? It didn't happen in one day, didn't happen next day, or the next day, or the next day, or the next day. See, it slowly unfolds. Even when we have black swan events like we did last year, where the market freaked out, um, everything went to a standstill, guess what? It takes time for this to happen. And you're not gonna wake up tomorrow and the market's down 80 points. Now you may think that. You, your brain may think, oh, the market's gonna crash here. Your brain may tell you you're going to see that, but not in the stock market. Maybe in individual stocks, yes, right, you're gonna see that, but not in the actual stock market. So let's actually bring this back to a neutralize. Let's neutralize our journey here. It's okay. If we're looking at these markets, we have a lot of fuel behind these markets. If you're trying to pick a top right now because you think you think the next crash is just around the corner, just remember it takes time for that to unfold, right? And it takes time for the crash to happen. And if you're looking for a 60 or 80% crash in the markets, which I do believe we're going to do, we're going to see after we continue this upward leg. We see a big blow off move, a big, the biggest blow off top we've ever seen in history, followed by the biggest crash in history. That's what's probably likely to happen. But here's the thing, where if we see a 60% movement on the downside, a crash call it, guess what? That's probably going to take, what? Two, four, five, six months, 12 months to happen. Remember, when we look at the 2008 financial crisis, right? The crash of 2008. Think about that for a minute here. Crash of 2008, that's 365 days. 2008 was one year. Think about that for a minute, okay? So we're so worried about the market crashing. Oh my goodness, the market's gonna crash, the market's gonna crash. Well, the market will start to roll over, right? Well, the market will start to give us some signs that the market is going to, is going to crash there. So I hope you can see, a little bit of tea here. Mm. One take, one take. Um, I hope you can see, traders, that that the reason why I'm still very long these markets is because of everything I've said there. I could be wrong with what I'm seeing through here, but looking at the S&P 500, technically, fundamentally of what I just said there, but technically also, we can see we've had a very big move up and now we're just consolidating here. That's a very, we had a big move up, nice little what we call a nice price move, right? We, and I, I like it as the market of using fuel, right? Using energy. We had a big move up. Now we're having a bit of a resting phase, like we did back here, had a bit of a resting phase. And then now I believe that we're now likely to see a bit of a breakout soon. And when we get the breakout, then we're probably likely to see a very nice move into Thanksgiving and then also into um, in December as well too, okay? So that's what I'm seeing through there when it comes to uh, the um, the stock market itself. You, but you're also noticing, look at the uh, the NASDAQ itself. Let me take everything off the screen here for a minute. Look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is just, NASDAQ is actually closed a new high just recently as well too. It's not exactly what I would like to see. I Meaning, you know, you can see you had just a little bit of a dip down and then the market then continued up. So it's, uh, I, I wouldn't, I'd actually, I like, I like seeing something like the S&P where we go like a really bit of a, just a sideways movement for a bit and then see a movement up. This one here, you can see had a bit of a breakdown. So, the, but the NASDAQ's looking really strong. I still have my 17,000 target there or 17,000 target on the NASDAQ, which I've had, you guys have been following me for the whole year. You guys know I've had that for the entire year and we're getting very, 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 very close. I even did a video back here in June, I think it was June, July, um, I did a video saying exactly that. If you go to my YouTube channel, you see the trailer video, the main video, simply talks about those targets that I've had for the whole year. So we're getting very, very close to my targets that I've had for the whole year. And that's what I'm seeing through there when it comes to that. Now, if we look at, so that's the market through there. Look at the Dow Jones. Look what's happened with the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones is getting a very nice pullback. So here's, here's the really interesting thing about the markets that I've learned. 
Um, when I started learning about reading the charts, right, reading the markets, I, I was, I, I first I didn't understand the nature of the markets, right? They go through pullbacks, right? Whip source pullbacks, so on and so forth. So when I got, whenever I was trading, I'd be like, oh look, here we go, we're having a bit of a down, we're, we're going down, we're going down, the market's gonna crash, the market's gonna crash, right? And we go down, 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 right? The market's gonna crash. But if we see this movement through here, the one thing that's important to understand is try to look at from a from a swinging motion, okay? From a swinging motion. And a swinging motion is like, where is the trend right now as we speak? We can see what? If I just bring on trend lines here, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna delete everything off the screen here for a minute. And I can see that, firstly, there is a bit of support and resistance where? Notice here on the short term, now this is short term TA on on uh, on the Dow, right? So we had a bit of a resistance through here, a lot of resistance. We had a lot of support through here. Now the, now the Dow is coming back down, pulling back through here, all right? So we're going through a bit of a pullback. Now a pullback is just that. It's just a pullback and then a rise, right? Because what do we have in upward trends? And a lot of traders who are new, you, know, you may be new right now in the markets, right? So a lot of traders who are new in the markets, they will see the market pulling back but they don't understand. But it took me. They don't understand, and it took me a while to really understand this. That when looking at the markets and when trading these markets, if a market is pull, if the market's going down, we've got to ask yourself: Is it part of it? Where is the trend? Because if we had an upward leg like that, and now we're just getting that, guess what? This could just be another higher low. We may be doing something like that, right? Then another higher low, and then away we go. So right now we're getting a pullback. Is this pullback? Is this the top of the market? Well, if we have a look at the markets, right? We just had what? We just had move up, higher low, higher low, and then now look what's happened: pullback, run up, and now we're getting a pullback. So this is the last low here. So there's a high probability that the Dow Jones is going to find a higher low here soon. Why? Because we ran up and we made a higher high. So we're actually in an upward movement and now we're just going through a pullback. So there's a massive probability. If we're trying to short the market through here, you're actually going against the overall movements. And this is what the market does, right? It pulls back, gets you short. You think, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm short the market. And then the market does that on you. You're like, why did the market get, why did the market just go up? It was going down. And, but what was happening is that the market was just going through what? It was going through these periods through here where the market goes through the pullbacks and then we get ready. So that's the reason why if we're ever looking for a time to get in, the time to get into a trade would be like right here as an example, or right here as it pulled back, or right here, right? I'm not gonna say, obviously I'm not gonna tell you to do that, right? But if I'm looking for an entry in the Dow Jones, when would it be the best time, right? As we're starting, to, as we find a bottom, and then as right here, if I go back to the S&P 500 the example, this see right here see how we actually this we actually had this downward leg and then we actually broke out so when we broke out that's when i bought right you buy it on the dip and then you ride the ride the rip so we can see that through there plus also if we have a look at the a bit of a short term ta of a trend line a bit of a trend line here it's probably somewhere through there but that's what i'm seeing through there if i'm looking at the actual dow jones itself we are getting a bit of a I'd have to say that'll be the trend line that I'm gonna use. And we're getting a bit of a short-term trend line. So this is that, this is the trend line I'd like to use on the Dow Jones as a momentum down leg, right? When is this down leg likely to come to an end before we see this market swing up? I wanna see the Dow Jones get back above this trend line. Once we get back above this trend line, if we can start to hold it and get back above, that's when we're ready to go for what I believe is going to be run up, pull back, and then once we once we actually you know the pullback might do something like this as an example right and you have a you have a trend line down through here as an example when the market breaks the momentum trend line on the downside which is this one here if we start to do something like this and then we break up guess what we're now getting ready to probably do this again probably through here does it make sense so after the pullback we're trying to get a move up so that's what we're seeing through there when it comes to the, and if you look at, and this is exactly what I did, the exact same analysis I did on the S&P, right? When I started seeing the market pull back, I just connected these highs and I just drew the trend line down and I knew that we'll start to just go through a bit of overall pullback. But look what happened. As soon as we broke out of this downward leg and we actually broke out of this, see all this resistance level through here, 
bit of resistance through here, bit of resistance through like all through there as well. As soon as we got that, I knew we're getting, there's a massive probability, no certainties, there's a massive probability that we had a move up, we had a pullback, and now we're getting ready for the next leg up. This bit here was this bit here, and now we're just getting ready for another move to the upside. Does that make sense, traders? So that's what we're seeing through there um, on the overall stock market. Nothing's really changed. If I go have a look at the same for the uh, Russell 2000, right? We had a, a, a very nice move to the upside, very nice move to the upside. And now we're just getting a pullback. And this is something that the market does a lot, especially when the market's coming out of a long-term channel, right? If we have a look at the market here, we can see how the market's been in a very, very nice, tight, long-term channel. And what the market does to to really start to sort of freak people out is it goes, it gets a bit of a breakout and then it comes back down, test this support, people, if people bought the breakout and, and then the market pulls back, a lot of the times the market will bounce and then we'll see this and this is just a bit of a test just to, to shake the weak hands out. So this movement through here and a massive move up and a move pullback, there's a high probability we're gonna get a higher low here soon and we're going to see a continuation on that uh, as well. But on a short-term basis, on a bit of a technical analysis basis, guys, we on the Russell 2000, around that two th or the IWM, the 230 is a major support level there. Plus, also there's a bit of a trend line uh, as well as you can see. There's actually a bit of a bit of a down through there. And then if I draw my trend line, probably somewhere through there. That's where I'm getting a lot of a lot of sort of the, the closes and bounces and stuff like that. So this is where really X marks the spot, bit of a shakeout, and then we're probably gonna see, probably gonna see then a very nice continuation to the upside uh, for December. So that's what I'm seeing through there, traders. Let's have a look at, um, on the gold market. You can see gold broke out of that 1,820 level. So beautiful, 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 strong breakout on that 1,800. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One take, one take, guys, one take. Um, I'm drinking green tea and then also lemon and ginger as well too um, on this beautiful Monday morning for me. So we are seeing that through there, we, we definitely we definitely did have a bit of a bit of a sideways sort of channel, didn't we, uh, through there? Not exact, but we definitely had that major resistance level around that 1820 level there. Let me just take that off the screen. I'm just looking at short-term technical analysis, guys. And we definitely do have a bit of a trend line coming up through there as well too. So... Um, on a short term level, we can see how that the market did break this sort of, if we're looking at the very short term basis, that, that sort of, as you can see here, right, that sort of 1810 level was definitely a, a strong resistance level here. Resistance here, resistance, resistance, resistance. It had a lot of resistance all through here. And then what happened is as you can see, it actually, once we actually got the close, a very nice strong break up close above this sort of strong sort of resistance level, you can see how it actually had a lot of problems closing above it. Could not close above it there. Could not close above it. Could not close above it. Could not close above it. See, see how it ran up, could not close above it. Look what happened. As soon as we closed above it, guess what? That's when the market started to have at least a bit of a, a, bit of a swing to the upside. Now we're just going through a pullback. So as you can see, we're in through a pullback here. This is the low and the market's going up. And now the market's gone through a bit. We, we're, we're probably likely to get maybe, or we might get a, a bit of a downward leg through here. But the gold is now starting to swing into an upward trend. So nothing has changed when it comes to gold through there. Let's have a look at the short term TA on silver. And as you can see, silver's had a very nice sort of pullback through here, beautiful high, low run up. And now we're just getting another pullback through here. Um, and so it's gonna be really interesting to see what actually happens through here on silver as well too. Move over now through to the GDX and we do have a lot of, there's a lot of sort of major resistance and support around that 3350 level. We do have a bit of a trend line from this level here to this level here, but that's not nowhere near it is yet. But you can see how we actually had a lot of resistance around that 3350 level and then we broke up. Now we're getting the pullback. Um, the question is, uh, and once again, this pullback here, if we're looking to jump into the GDX, when would be the best time to look for a trade? Remember I said before, when the market runs up, it'll stair step down like this, okay? And then what you do is you draw a bit of a trend line like that. And then once the market starts to break out of that trend line like that, then we're now likely to see what? The next leg up. 
um, just like they did with the S&P 500. But if I use, say, if I use this as an example, we had a move up, then we had what? We had a pullback. So if I draw the trend line from there through to there, all right, just like so, guess what happened? As you can see, right, we had a resistance point through there, resistance point, see how it actually had a lot of rejection on this, this, this downward leg? Well, look what happened, ran up, not that point through there. As soon as we got what? As soon as we got this close above it, guess what happened? We went for a nice, what? A nice move back up. So you can see how um, I, I look at these from momentum swings of my mark, from the markets, right? Momentum, a strong move up. When's this pullback likely to end? Then that there, then, then we're likely to see here. So if I'm doing that exact same analysis right now, I would have to, if I'm doing it on the exact, on, on the, on the, on that there, on a conservative level, I would have to use that trend line there. The reason why is because I got two touches. I got this starter point, and then I got this rejection point down here. I could use something like this, um, like that there, but on a conservative level, I would want to see you, you. You could use that, right? But on a on a more of a conservative level, I would want to see the D, the G the, the D, GDX start to really break above this level here. Just like we see here, right? Pull back. Once we break back above the, the level, we're likely to go for the next move. Pull back. Once we break above the level, then we're likely to make the next move um, up in the markets there. And so we can see what's happening through their traders on the, on, especially on this big downward leg through here, right? Resistance, resistance, and then the market came up resist, resistance as well too. So, and then we rejected it. You can see, um, yeah, you can see that through uh, there in the market. So that's what I'm seeing through there on the GDX. And let's go have a look at the SIL. And you can see here on the SIL as well too, just a, just a very nice sort of, strong upward upward sort of trend motion uh, momentum and motion um, you've got a bit of resistance through there had a move up now we're getting a pullback once again when, when would be a good time to get in on this pullback it's just like we saw here right movement up then we draw a trend line coming down like that through there like so nothing going on through here Look what happened. As soon as we broke back above it, then we went for a bit of a move. Now, we never know. How, I'm talking about the short-term swings, right? The short-term momentum swings in the market. Now we're getting a bit of a pullback. We're getting sort of this sort of action happening right now. All right, something like that. Bit of a pullback. Um, and then we had had a bit of a drop to the downside. So that's what we're seeing through there on on that there. It's not, it's not as, as strong as the GDX um, on that level through there. So same for like the Russell, right? Like when, when if we're looking at, if we're looking at the momentum, right? When, when is the Russell likely, when is the momentum on the Russell likely to be then kicking back up to go back to the upside? Same thing, right? You just draw a trend line from that, that, that point there, to that point there. Notice how this is the resistance. So as, as long as we stay below here, we're in that downward leg. We haven't started the kick up yet, right? We haven't started that kick up yet. But once we start to get back above here, guess what? We've started the kick up again, and now it's like a trend continuation type of move, right? The trend is your friend until the end. Pullback, trend continuation. So I hope that helps you out there, traders. What I wanna do right now is uh, oh, if you have an answer yet, guys, um, I'm running a flash sale right now just for seven dollars. If you enjoy this sort of stuff, then go grab that seven dollar trading course that I'm running uh, in link in description just for seven dollars. I normally sell for five hundred bucks, but I'm doing a bit of a sale right now, so seven dollars. Very first link in the description there. One thing I really want to talk to you about is I really want to uh, bring um, this this article here that I wrote here. Okay, so this is for you guys that are just after technical analysis and not after the mindset stuff. There's your TA, you can leave now. Thanks for watching. If you're after more about me as a person as well too, um, and a bit more about mindset sort of stuff, then I've got, got, got a little bit of a gift for you to finish off today's video as well too, right? So this is what I wrote for my private clients um, on the weekend. Let me actually just zoom in here a bit here. Let me actually read this here, okay? Do, 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 do. Okay, cool, here we go, right? So, um, and yes, there's gonna be a lot of grammar and spelling mistakes here, okay? So if you don't like that, then you can just go get nicked, okay? Um, <laughs> so, oh my goodness, John. It's interesting, you know, traders, when I talk about that, I have a lot, I have, or I have some people come to me and they're so, their standards are so high with, oh my goodness, John, your spelling and grammar is horrible. I just can't stand it. 
But your sta- but those those people, you may be the same person right now, right? Your standards are so high when it comes to your spelling, but your standards are so low when it comes to your trading. If you can flip that, where your standards are not really that high when it comes to spelling and grammar, but your standards are high with your trading, which one's gonna do better for you financially? Just just saying there, okay? So, um, but here we go, all right? So it's the Sunday morning for me, and I wanted to share some, th- some things with you that are going on in my life, and hopefully will give you some things to think about. Reading. I never, I've, I've never been a big reader, but I found it hard to, but I, because I found it hard to do in school. That said, um, they said I had ADHD because I could not sit still. The interesting thing is that I've learned, that I've learned how to read more after school um, than in school because I was, uh, because I wanted to read more. I wanted to read when I was excited uh, or interested in something. When I started to learn how to, re- when I when I started to learn about the stock market seven years ago, that's when I that's when my reading started to get better. I'm trying to do the same thing with my kids right now, aka some of my kids actually hate school, so I'm trying them to find out what are they really interested in, and then maybe getting them reading or writing or thinking about that. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, these last few reads I've been reading a lot of books and listening to them on Audible. The best books I love to read is bios. Right now I'm listening to Will Smith's biography and his story is amazing. I'm getting excited to pick it up again to see what happens next in his story. In fact, I wrote this, I actually wrote this yesterday. It's Monday morning for me right now. I wrote this yesterday morning and then I spent like <laughs> two, three hours listening to it, listening to the, or the book on audio. Anyway, um, two books. Wolf of Wall Street and Shoe Dog, the Nike story, are two books that I would lay down in bed for hours. I'm talking about like, here's a guy that couldn't sit still, had ADHD, right? And I would sit in bed for like four hours at a time sometimes just reading these books. Um, and, and hours would fly past by, uh, yeah, by because I was because I was so excited about the story. Something, something about laying in bed and reading the book calms my soul. And that's something that I really want you to think about as well too. When you're going through your trading, um, I have to do more of this. I'm guilty of this, but I have to do more things that's good, good for my calming of my nervous system, calming of my soul, calming of the mind, right? Just to calm it down. So when I come back to the markets, I can be so present and see what's really going on. If we're so into the market all the time, but we don't actually step back and just say, you know what, I'm spending the next two days away from everything just to calm my mind and calm everything, then we, we sometimes we can get these blind spots, right? Um, so I'm guilty of that as much as most people. I just can't get, I can't stay away from the markets, but I have to force myself when I do, I come back to the markets and I can give you some awesome training like I'm doing today for you. The reason why I love reading these books, books because it gives me encouragement and also neutralizes my expectations out of life and the journey to achieve success in life. That's actually a really, really, really big thing, traders. Let me explain something here. As, as I said to you there, right? As I said here, the reason why I love reading these books because it neutralizes, right? It neutralizes my journey. What I may think about success, whatever we call that, money, fame, cars, house, whatever, right? Holidays, private jets, whatever you want to think about. Whatever I think about that, firstly, about how I think I'm going to achieve that. That's the first thing, right? When I think about how I'm going to achieve that, a lot of the bullshit marketing out there say, oh, make money really quickly and make millions of dollars really easy by the click of a button and then the robots and all this type of bullshit, right? It's all this old type of bullshit. So I wanna neutralize my journey to actually achieving those results. Because if I'm thinking this is gonna be really easy, and there's never gonna be any setbacks and it's never going to be any problems at all, then guess what? When I do hit the challenge, like this is not this isn't this is not the way this is. Oh, this is a scam. Oh my goodness, this is a scam. I can't believe I signed up for this scam. Oh, I'm going through a bit of a setback right now. I thought this was easy. This is a scam. I want my money back and I'm gonna go find something else. Right? But we all know that's not that's not that's not the real journey to success, right? The real journey, if we're honest with ourselves, is going through what I'm gonna go through in a minute, but it was going through what with those rough patches, right? So I, for, for me personally, reading these bios neutralizes my journey about the truth, about if I want to achieve above average results, amazing results in my life, the top 1% and the top 0.001% becoming that in life, what is the real journey towards that? 
right? Not a false attitude type of thing, but a real journey. And am I willing to be able to pay the price? Because as a price, as Jim Rohn says, you want the goal, yes, but are you willing to pay the price? Something that I learned from Jim Rohn, I, I used to listen to a lot of audio books going for a run in the morning, right? So I used to go for a 45 minute run and I used to listen to a lot of audio books on, on, on run. I haven't done it for a while now because I'm trying to give my brain a bit of a break because I been because uh, I was actually doing that. I listen to a bit of music now, but I still listen to audio books, right? Mainly in the afternoon, etc. But anyway, whole purpose is something I learned from Jim Rohn is that, um, yes, you want that goal. If you want to become a really successful trader, cool. But are you willing to pay the price? There's a price to pay. What is the price to pay? The price to pay to become a really good trader. You got to go through a lot of setbacks. You got to go through some losing trades. You got to get so you, you're probably going to blow up a few trading accounts. On you and you're going to stumble a lot. You're going to do. A, you're going to get a lot of setbacks. You're going to get a lot of smack in the face. It's going to be a lot of sleepless nights because if you're personally trying to figure it out for yourself. What works for you personally, right? Because you have a lot of systems out there. And I have my trading system. That's why with the link in the tra- in the in, in the link in the description with that seven dollar sale I'm running right now, I have an education, and then you take what you want with that, right? And then run with what you want with it. I don't say trade this system now in my coaching program. If you like to become part of my coaching program, um, you just just email me, and then uh, I'm, I'm happy to give you like a bit of an end of your saddle and stuff like that. If you're interested in becoming a private client of mine, but Regardless of that, right? What is the price to pay? So that's why I say neutralize your journey. And I want to neutralize your journey. See, as I as as I've gone in my trading, I've been trading now for 17 years. One of the best books I've ever read is the Market Wizard books. The best books. And that's what I would strongly recommend for you. The best books I've ever read is the Market Wizard books. Why? Because it neutralized my journey. To say, okay, the truth about this, not this bullshit marketing out there, but the truth about getting ahead is one, it's going to take time. It's not going to take a week. It's not even going to take a year. It's going to take several years and maybe even up to five years, maybe even 10 years to really get going in a big way. Now, when I say 10 years, it may take you 10 years to make that $1 million goal. You know what I mean? Uh, it may take you a couple of years to maybe hit that six-figure goal. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, let's actually put this into perspective and be, the, be be reality about that. And by reading the Market Wizards books and seeing what they went through again and again and again and again and again and again through the story, that's what kept me in trading. Back when I started 17 years ago and I lost $250,000 from trading, what kept me in it and then blowing up another 50% and so on and so forth. But what kept me in it was understanding that I was willing to pay the price for what I show you today and, and, and trading and so on and so forth, right? It's what I'm willing to do. So it neutralized my journey. Yes, you want to become a good trader, but are you willing to pay the price? And if you're not willing to pay the price, aka go through the failures, the setbacks for you to continue to grow, you're not willing to actually do that, go through that price, then you, then you won't be able to get the reward. So let's actually just be honest with myself, right? It neutralizes my, ex, as I say here, right? It's, it neutralizes my expectations out of life and the journey towards achieving success. So here are a few things like that come to me after reading these, what we call success. And I call success, right? Because what is success really? Something I've learned in life and by reading massive successful stories and even listening to Will Smith's story right now, Jim Carrey and all these successful people is like, like we are, oh, he's a major success. We think success money, right? But what is success really? Like success is like, success is like, you know, uh, you know, success is like, you know, oh, well, he's made $10 million. Is that successful? But what if he's out of shape? Like we, I think as we're slowly reading, what, what is really success to you, right? Because one thing that's really hard, and I'll talk about this in a minute. One thing that's really hard, right, is that we, is that, once we achieve this thing in life, it's like, is that all? Anyway, let, let me actually continue here. So the first thing that what we call, and I call what we call success, right? The rise and fall and the lessons gone through cycles. Something I was talking about just a minute ago. They all started from zero, the lessons from these people. They all started from zero and some of them got big wins. Like Will Smith's story is that he made a lot of money, a lot of money, become a millionaire really, really quickly from uh, from his uh, from becoming a singer, right, or a rapper, 
he started doing really, really, really well, right? And the Fresh Prince, actually, it was it was the Fresh Prince and something. I forget what it was now. Um, that's what the name was of his rapper, right? So the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, uh, the, the show, uh, that was after he became really successful. So, so let's actually continue on here, right? So the thing is, is that, is that they all started from zero, and some got a big win, right? So they get a big win. But then they went back down really fast. They, they spent all the money. They didn't pay the taxes. You know, we've all been there, right? Or some of us been there anyway. The lessons from this, what I call cycles, rise and fall in one's life is where all your lessons are to help you grow. Without the set, without the setback, setups, that's it. without the setbacks and things just not working out, they would not get the lessons. They would not get the lessons. So without the setbacks and failures, they would not get the lessons and therefore they would not have achieved success. So what I'm saying to you is that if you're becoming a good, if you're trying to become a good trader or whatever you want to do in life, we must understand that it's the setbacks. If you've gone through a bit of a hard point, it's the setback, it's the lessons, it's these hard points, the sticky point, the mud points, the things are not working. It's those times that are going to cause you and help you to do really, really well in the future, right? It's the lessons that I'm learning last year and this year that's going to help me become better next year and next year and next year and next year, right? So if you're not willing to go through what we call these cycles, then it's not going, it's, it's, you, then you won't become successful, right? So many of us go through life scared to fail. But if you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough. And if you're not trying hard enough, then you won't achieve your goals. The big thing here is that your goals, what are your goals? It's always the interesting thing, right? Is that we go through a lot of, a lot of us go through life. Like I know my goals. I know where I'm, I'm going right now. But the interesting thing is like, what are your goals? What are you personally trying to achieve? Because it's interesting, right? It's like, oh, I just want to make money. But how much money? Like, let's actually start to bring this, let's actually get a bit of a plan here. And probably most of you right now are not having any goals at all. It's just like, I just want to make a lot of money. Well, how much is a lot of money? Let's actually start to put a number on it. Right, let's actually, we, um, uh, uh, that's where we should be starting, right? Goals, we should be having something that we're trying to at have a target. Mine was six figures out of, the, out of the markets. And it took me about four years to do that. <laughs> All right, I went through the cycle, 250,000 and then six figures, right? For me, this has been huge in my trading. So many times I would get a slap from the market and it sting, and it stung, should say, should say stung, and it stung like a bitch. I'll go to the gym, say to myself, you're an idiot. Why did you do that? After a week of beating myself up, I would sit back and ask, what did work? What did, uh, why did I get the slap, etc." I would learn something. I would learn from that. I would learn something and then try to implement, implant, <laughs> implement that in my trading. Told you I had a lot of spelling mistakes here, right? I would try to implement that into my own trading. So I would go through the slap, go through the setback, beat myself up. You're in it. Why did that for? Go to the gym, think about it, calm down. Okay, let's actually get back to it. What worked? What didn't work? What do I need to focus on? Let's keep going, right? And so you go through that. I would do well for a while, then slap. Now a slap could be a big loss or even a bad month, right? Or even blind up your trading account. And I'll go through these cycles again and again and again and again. The biggest thing for me is record, is, is record, put into a, putting into a spreadsheet every trade I take and therefore I can go back and say, John, let's see where you screwed up and let's see where you can get better. The success I have in my life today has come from these cycles. Without them, I would not be here today. As you go through your trading journey, this will happen to you. The ones who succeed, learn from the cycles and keep going. The ones who don't succeed, they become a pussy and say, this is too much for me because as you see, that doing really well requires you to be able to get setbacks and to keep moving forward. You get a setback and then you stop and you're like, this is not for me, I can't believe it, right? The, here's the thing, the big key, the big thing is that you must stay on face street even when you can't see it working out. That's the biggest thing, right? Is just say, you know what? Man, I just can't see this working out. I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't, I don't see why this is going to work out. I just can't see how this is going to work out. But you know what? 
I've just got to stay on Faith Street. I can just, I can see it working out. I can see my vision. I can see me just doing well out of the markets. Right now, it's very, very hard to, very, very hard to, 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 to actually, or I can't see that, sure. I can't see that. It's very hard for me to see that. But you know what? I've just got to have faith. I've just got to keep going. I've just got, okay, well, I just need to get better today. What do I need to do? Right? Keep getting better and better and better and better in the markets. Okay? Making lots of money, buying all the cool stuff does not equal happiness. This is such a big thing, right? Big thing in, in I've always thought about it in my life as, as I go through my life, right? As I read these books, and just yesterday I was reading this in Will Smith's books, that even if you do make millions of dollars, buy the dream house, car, etc., it does not mean you're happy, right? It's like, why are we doing what we're doing? Why do we stress so much to make so much money to buy the house, to buy the shit? Why is that? We stress so much to do it, right? Because what? We think, oh, once we have that, now I'm not saying we shouldn't. I go for big goals and I go for massive financial goals, right? But if I am tying my happiness to that, then I'm going to be, I'm going to be deeply, deeply disappointed. Deeply disappointed. In fact, the opposite might come true to where you are more depressed with all the stuff than not having it, right? We grew up thinking that once we, once I make a million dollars, buy the car, the house, then I'm going to be happy. Then after years and years of stressing and working hard to get there, we sit back thinking, now what? And this is where it can go down downhill really fast. We've got millions of dollars in the account. We've got the beautiful house. We can go vacation anywhere. We've got the car. But yet something seems missing right? Where's the love? Where's friendship, right? Because the happiness comes from the connection of the soul and that, that there comes from love, connection, growth. That's where you see these people that flash a lot of stuff. That's not what's making them happy. Oh, look at my cool Ferrari in my car, in my garage. The Ferrari just sits there. I know I got a really nice car, right? I got a beautiful sports car. The sports car just sits in the garage. I don't want to drive it out anywhere. I don't want to get it scratched. I don't, <laughs> right? It's silly. Like, I've got a beautiful sports car, but it's just in the garage. It just sits there. And I just drive the family car. I don't care if that gets scratched. It's just a, just a nice family car, all right? But then I have my sports car, and it's a beautiful sports car, and I'm just like, I actually don't want to drive it. I spent all this money buying the sports car, but I, just, I actually don't want to drive it. I drive it on special occasions. But you see what I'm saying there? It's like, you may think, oh, look how cool this is. But again, it's just a sports car, right? I hop in it, I drive it. Yay, look at me, beautiful sports car, whatever, right? Big deal. I was, and when I bought the sports car, which this is my car that I, that I envisioned for many years, and then I finally bought it this year, guess what? It's like, oh, yay, look at me, sports car. And that lasted for about two weeks. And it's like, oh, it's just a car. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what's next? What's next? What do I get up today to be happy, right? Becoming happy uh, comes from something deeper. So what makes you happy? What are the things that bring you joy? And for me, I really think about that. Yes, I want to get up and do something I'm excited about, right? And do something passionate about. Because if it's, if it's just for money, that's when you're like, holy shit, I've just spent 40 years of my life chasing this thing called money and success and fame and fortune, but it's empty. There's something else there. Jim Carrey says that I wish all the fame and fortune that you've ever dreamed of. So you can see that, you can see that that's not where you're going to find your sense of completion. And I see this from mentors in my life to even stuff that I've achieved. The, the success that I'm achieving right now in my life, I've never thought in my wildest dreams. Just even 10 years ago, I thought, no way I'd achieve what I'm achieving right now in my life. And so as I, yes, I want to achieve more financial success, and I'm continue to do that through my trading and so on and so forth, and my business and stuff like that. But I got to continue to remind myself that that's not the thing that brings me happy. For me, what brings me happy is going to the gym, hanging around like-minded people, having fun and a laugh and all that. That's what brings me happiness. It has actually nothing to do with the markets, right? Well, that's just one of the things that brings me happiness. Well, other things that bring me happiness is for, for me to be able to teach people like I taught today in the, in, like I taught, in taught, like I taught today, just something simple as, okay, the market's in an upward trend when we're going through a pullback. When the, when's that pullback going to end? Remember I said before with the short-term momentum, like I shared with you just looking at this chart right now. So I want to encourage you. 
What brings you happiness? What is the things that makes you, and that's actually, while we're on our journey to achieving financial success and stuff like that in our dream house, that's good. But don't think that that's where you're gonna find your sense of happiness. The, uh, that, that like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited about this, right? Um, because it may be cool for a minute. You may just spend millions and millions and millions of dollars buying the beautiful car and the house and all that sort of stuff. And you have a, have a massive mortgage to then find yourself maybe later on the track saying, why do I own all this shit for? Like, and, and that's something that is so, so, so important for you. So anyway, traders, I hope you really enjoyed this out. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about some things that I've said in today's video. And uh, I'm really excited for the rest of this year. And I hope today really gives you some things to really think about when it comes to your deeper analysis. Yes, we're trading here for money, but let's actually neutralize your journey as well.